We now want to look at combining sources. So just like we could combine resistors in parallel and in series, we can combine sources, voltage and current sources, in parallel and in series. We'll start off with voltage sources. If you place voltage sources in series, it's just like putting batteries in series, um, and we just add the voltages, being careful that we uh, respect the polarity. So in this example here, you see that the 3 volts at the end is in the opposite polarity to the 10 and the minus 2 uh, volt sources. So the net voltage, uh, if we go plus on the right, minus on the left, is going to be 10 plus minus 2 and then minus 3 for 5 volts. Now can we put voltage sources in parallel? And no, we cannot do that. If you put a voltage source that's 3 volts, say in parallel with a voltage source that's 4 volts, who's going to win? In fact, there is since there's a different in potential, and you do KVL, you have to go around that loop. There's got to be 1 volt somewhere, but yet they're actually tied exactly together. Now if there was a resistance between them, yes you could, because then the differential voltage, 1 volt, would go across that resistor but with no resistance you cannot parallel two voltage sources. Okay, now you might wonder, what? wait a minute, what happens if I take two uh, batteries and I place them, uh, I connect them together, right? And so in this case, let's say we have two car batteries that are connected um, in, in parallel. So if we assume one battery is at 13.5 volts and the other one is not so charged, it's 11 volts and um, if the cables that connect uh, those batteries have some amount of resistance, 20 milliohms, let's say, then when you connect this up, you're not violating this principle of saying you're trying to connect two voltage sources together. The reality is that uh, there is resistance between them, and you will get a lot of current flowing. There'll be, in this case, looks like 125 amps. It'll flow from the higher uh, voltage battery to the lower voltage battery. Another uh, example, might be if you take, for instance, a 9 volt battery and you connect it in parallel with the 1 volt double A. Okay, that would be that would be bad. But we can do it. What happens? Well the inside of the battery, inside the battery there is a resistance, internal resistance to the battery. Maybe it's a couple ohms, I don't know what the resistance, 10 ohms for the uh, battery, 9 volt battery, and maybe 1 ohm for the 1.5 volt battery. When you connect these together, you are closing uh, a loop, but you're not connecting an ideal 9 volt battery to an ideal 1.5 volt battery. They're being connected through the, the their internal resistances. And you'll have a lot of current that will flow from the 9 volt to the 1.5 volt battery. The 9 volt, being a lower capacity battery, will discharge pretty quickly, but with all that current flowing, you will also be generating heat inside of both of these batteries. And so you might feel the battery getting warm or even hot. So this is not a good thing to do. But you won't be violating the rule of placing two ideal voltage sources in parallel. Now let's look at current sources. So we start off by putting current sources in parallel, and that's the natural thing to do, and there's no problem with doing that. So here we have a 5 and a minus 1 uh, and then an 8 amp source. The 8 amp source is oriented in a, in a downward direction. And so the net current source that is pointing upwards is going to be the 5 amps plus the minus 1 amp and then minus 8 amps for a net of minus 4 amps pointing up. Now just like the voltage sources, uh, where the voltage source could not be placed in parallel, current sources cannot be connected in series. Uh, and this cannot be done because at the node between them you cannot satisfy KCL. Right? The, node, the current entering that node is not equal to the current leaving. So KCL is violated just like KVL was violated when we put two voltage sources in parallel. Now what about um, mixing, mixing sources? Can we put a voltage source and a current source in series? Or can we put a voltage source and a current source in parallel?
And the answer is yes, you can do that. You're not going to violate KCL if you put a voltage source in series with the current source because they're not both uh, battling for how much current is going to flow. One sets the current, the current source, and the voltage source is just along for the ride. And what happens though is if you take those two sources in series, like I have shown right here, and you connect them to a load, okay, the load is going to have a current pushed through it that's going to be a current I equal to I2. And that current will flow whether or not V1 is present or not. Would you agree? Because the current source is controlling the current flow in that loop. And so from the standpoint of the load, the, these two circuits here on the left and this second one here, these sources are actually equivalent. And I have to say from the perspective of the load, all right, the load would never know that there's a V1 in series with the I2 because all it sees is someone's pushing I2 amps at me. But now there is a difference, and you can look at this example um, below. I won't go through it, but there is a difference or an impact to how much power I2 has to deliver. In the one case, when there is no V1, the I2 only delivers power to the load. But when there's V1, the current source also will be delivering power to, or it may actually be absorbing power from, V1, depending on the polarity of V1. So the takeaway is a current source and a voltage source can be placed in series, but the current source ends up controlling how that combined source presents itself to the rest of the circuit in which it is uh, attached. The same thing or a similar thing occurs for sources in parallel. When you have sources in parallel, you are not violating, or a current and a voltage source in parallel, you're not violating KVL. However, the voltage across those two sources is controlled by V1. And so here again, when we connect that up to a load, all the load sees is a voltage, in this case, V equal to V1. It has no knowledge that there's a current source I2, and it doesn't even care about it because that I2 has no impact. This may seem hard to believe, but let's say you had a load that was 10 ohms, and you had a voltage source that was, let's say, 10 volts. And so the current flowing through the load here is going to be 1 amp. And if I2 is 0 amps, or if I2 is 1,000 amps, it makes no difference to the load. The load will still have 1 amp flowing through it, and the load will still have 10 volts across it. Okay, But what will be very different for the voltage source is that in the first case, the voltage source will be supplying 1 amp or 10 watts to the load. In the second case, it will be supplying 10 watts to the load, but then it will be receiving 10,000 watts from I2. So it will be receiving a net, uh, what is that, 9,990 watts. Okay, I think I'll stop here. There is an example. Um, I will leave that for you to work through that if you care to.